So I just played around and made a few glass morphism blank cards. They look kind of cool. They look better, I think when there's shapes and objects behind them compared to being on just a flat background even if it's a gradient or a picture I think having the different objects really emphasizes the um, that glass look so what I'm doing is actually taking a project I created a few weeks ago which was this kind of wallet app concept thing I was going to call it pocket because uh, keep your wallet in your pocket but <laughs> it's full of bad jokes and I'm here all night and I've decided I'm gonna use this um, I keep wanting to call it glass UI glass morphism um, for this app to see what it might look like so I've gone ahead and created one of my first pages with all of the cards on um, I am like in love with this screen right now. I don't know, it's the colours, um, along with the kind of glass effect. I think it looks just so awesome. So what I'm going to do, to kind of remind myself how I had it kind of opening. Okay, I had the cards flat and then tilted. Click on one, they go in. So I'll show you what I created originally. Um, you can basically swipe through all the bank cards, uh, click on one to look through it, uh, again, spin your card around. I think this is kind of fun animation, clearly I didn't put those in the same position. Um, and then I was just dragging between all the different cards, um, which ones did I put details on? Blue one, probably. Yeah, see some transactions again flick between and this stuff should change go back yeah so i'm thinking of doing this now with this new kind of design that i just made so i was playing around with how to get the glass effect to happen um so let me show everybody quickly i just made a rectangle to make my kind of bank card shape Give it some rounded corners. Um, you know, just put some details on here. So, that even do it? Yeah, it's just really small. Just need a, any random string number. Let me turn off the 3D. Let's make this some transparency so we can see what we're doing. Um, I just need four, a couple of spaces, space, space, One, two, three, four, space, space, there we go, that's the right amount of numbers, I'm just going to centre align more of those, uh, copy it down, put my name, I should have aligned it that way around really, shouldn't I, uh, and then dupe that, and I'm going to put expiry of uh, 0121. So we can work on hierarchy of these things. So it's kind of bang on. Let's just make six. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that down. Mm -mm -mm. Let's give them at least a 10 in between. I'm going to make this. These are all kind of odd font sizes. Let me just crank it to 40. Move that out and put those at 30. Actually, you know what? That can be a bit bigger. Let's make it 45. Alright, a bit of center it. So it doesn't budge around. I'm going to line those edges up. Um, yeah, okay, so I've got, you know, basic card. Um, and what I was doing was playing around. Let me just put a little shape here. I'm just going to give it a radio fill. Let's go with that. I want colour as well. So it's kind of nice. Uh, these things don't really matter. I just need something in the background. 
to show you all how this is going to work. So what I did first was I was trying object blur and I thought well it kind of does it but it does it more to the card than it does the background. So then I thought okay maybe it's um, a thing with you can apply it to the background which also works but then obviously when the object is not behind the card it doesn't work. So actually what we gotta do is background blur and put the opacity back all the way up and you'll see that it's just yeah blurred everything that's behind it and that's what gives it this glass effect there's no need for any uh, any other transparency or anything like that um, which is what I was playing around with I was playing with you know making the card itself have a kind of again another radial kind of gradient with uh, white in different transparency levels so I was having it at 100 and I was having it at um, 40 because I thought that would also help but actually it doesn't, it doesn't make a difference you don't need to do that um, it can just be a solid white one less thing to do it's always good and then the border Again, this I will add some transparency to just to give it that nice kind of edge. I think 30, 35 is quite nice. And then I'm not making it pure white because you see that's quite harsh here. What I'm doing is actually just bringing that down to be more of a kind of grey. I love the the D grey. I think it's quite a nice tone. Uh, yeah, so if I now put the background shape in here. I'm just going to give it a super quick, super quick linear fill. Um, don't mind me, I just don't like greys. I love colourful stuff. I get this all completely tashes now, but you get the picture, you get the point. So you can see it's all blurred, fuzzy behind. Um, and then perfectly fine um, in front. So yeah, that's, that's how I created the card. So I'm just going to group those. See that? And if you can play around with it a bit more, maybe you think it's not quite right, just play with these levels down here. So we're going to play with the lower amount and the brightness, uh, like I said, I didn't really use the opacity. I don't think there's any need to, because actually that makes it, we need it to be transparent. We, we don't want it to be opaque. So uh, just playing with, what's this one called again? The blur amount. I mean, we'll never remember those names. So we've got the blur amount. Um, you know, you don't want it to be too subtle and you don't want it to be too blurred because then it just looks a bit off, but I think Right around 15 is kind of nice. And then the brightness, well, you know, we could do a dark, a dark UI. <laughs> we could do a dark version of glass morphism. You know, glass does come in all colors. Um, so this is kind of cool, actually. Um, you know, you whack it all the way up, you get super bright. So you just want to find the level that you're comfortable with that gives it enough distinction that you can tell, you know, there's there's something there. You don't want it to be, again, too subtle where it really does look just like it's not there. Or maybe you do, maybe that's the look you want to go for. Um, but it's, I quite like it when it looks a little bit more kind of frosted, I guess you'd say. So long one, get on the brightness. So I kind of like that, but I just like to give it a bit more of that obvious look between the two. So that's how I did the glass kind of effect. Um, and then I just made a few different cards. So I basically made one, duplicated it, it's like doop, 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 changed some of the card names and numbers, expiry and all the rest of it. Um, I do need to come in here and line things up because Things have kind of gone and shifted on me. 
Let's move Spirey. Oh, that name. That looks too far over now. Maybe what I can do is just enlarge like this text box. That's the one I want, I think. No. Oh, come on. Don't know which one I want. Oh, let me just select my name. Uh, oh, okay. It's just the card number that shifted. So let's just bump that back. Look about there, looks good. And I'm just going to kind of do the same. Just line them all up so that it's kind of uniform. So, yeah, this is my card page. Actually, super excited. Um, I'm now going to make it so that all my cards are kind of closed up and in more of a stack. Now, I don't know how this is really going to look, but I don't think it's going to be super practical because in reality, actually, no, the blur kind of, it kind of works. Oh, didn't think it would. Okay, now I'm, now I'm quite excited. So just try and get these kind of kind of equal enough oh that is so nice and then I might even do one step further so you'll notice I'm working backwards from my animation because that's just the screen that kind of came to mind and that I create first so um, yeah just, just going backwards and then I'm gonna what I want to do is reset the 3D transformations here. So let's make sure I'm not clicking on the right things. Nope. Take them out of the group. Okay, this should be what I need. Yeah, reset. Um, actually, I just want to reset all of these. So then I get. That really nice animation when I auto animate. So they're all piled on top of each other, we can't really see them. Um, I might put a little message down here like, uh, Welcome to Pocket, because this, um, this is what I want to call this app. Do I want to call it Wallet? I feel like that name is just so, so done, so obvious. Let's do something new. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't really know where I want to put that yet. But it's obviously going to need to animate off, so I need to put it on all my artboards. I'm going to have it so that when we. Actually, when we. get to our uh, artboard and the cards have come out. Actually, I'm just going to make it go down to zero opacity, so it just kind of fades out of the way. Um, let's... <coughs> Excuse me. Let's wire these up. I'm excited. Okay, I'm going to put that on a... Um, put that on a tap. Let's do auto animate. Probably... Let's do easy these out. I want that to be fairly fast, so then this one is going to be on a time delay. I kind of want it to automatically spread the cards out, but also I don't want the cards to go from the first state to the third state straight away. I kind of want to have that in between where they rotate and they, they kind of move in that 3D space and then they all spread out so that you can see them so I might make that a bit slower let's see how that goes let's preview Whew. let's get these out of the way so we can see properly this looks so nice okay something went wrong let's have a look we can see when i tapped didn't quite transition nicely which means for auto animate to work 
something is clearly not um, correctly named because it needs the same names on all the artboards. Okay, so that's welcome to pocket group group group. Aha, uh -huh. so they're all in one group. Let me put these all into the same group. I'm going to copy all of the names. Two, three, four, group. See, you've got too many groups. I need to start naming them. Come on, best practice people, name your layers. <laughs> Let's have a look now. See, we have that really slick, really smooth transition. Let's do it one more time. I like the way it, obviously, as the cards move with that glass effect, what it does with the background. I think that is just really cool. And I haven't done anything with background, you know, that's that's static, that stays how it is. Yeah, so that's the first part of Pocket turning into a glass morphism app. This is kind of where I left it. Um, and I was kind of happy with the interactions um, and how it was working, but I wasn't really happy with the UI, you know, it's kind of, I felt like it was a bit simple, you know, it's colourful and it's bold and it's kind of got that pop of colour. Um, but for me, I just felt there was something lacking, um, which is why I didn't kind of put it out anywhere. I wanted to just keep it in my little folder of uh, design play, as I call it, and um, come back to it. And now, uh, now that I've got it to this, oh my gosh, I'm so happy that I left it alone to uh, come back to it. So yeah, I um, actually am going to go through and create the rest of this on my um, Behance Live because I have just been approved. I'm super, super, super excited. I get to finally live stream with everybody. So I will put that on my Instagram, what date and time I'm going to go live. I'll give you all plenty of notice. It is most likely going to be at the weekend. Um, and time wise, I am based in London, the UK. So for it to be a time that kind of suits all the different time zones, I'm probably looking at late afternoon late lunch so maybe anywhere between sort of 3 p.m 5 p.m i'll probably start around that sort of time so yeah check my socials for more updates and we will be coming back to this see you soon <laughs>